Okay, folks, um, no technical issues. What a joy this is. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome so many of the cast of the Final Fantasy VII Remake here today. Hello, folks. Your microphones are now live. Welcome to the stream. Um, I'm hey, going oh, to take this opportunity to introduce everyone. So we've got, um, and I'll be basing this on or, or how it's organized for, for people to see here. So we've got Cody Christian, who is the voice of Cloud. John Bentley, who is the voice of Barrett. Uh, Britt Woo! Barron, who is the voice of Tifa. Brianna White, who's the voice of Aerith. Uh, Vic Chow, who's the voice of Sung. Mallory Lowe, who's the voice of Madam M. Erica Lindbeck, who's the voice of Jesse. Austin Lee Matthews, who's the voice of Roche. Daniel Mulcray, who's the voice of Gwen, myself, the host, and Max Millman, who's the voice of Red 13. And I thought I was Red. at least going to stutter once. I'm quite proud of myself for getting that right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Our host. You need an introduction oh, as well. Yeah, yeah don't, don't say that. You haven't seen me host yet. <laughs> but no, it's a, it's a real delight to, to have you all here. Um, there's a lot I want to talk about, but I would like to start by saying um, that there were quite a few VAs who would have liked to have been here today who unfortunately couldn't. I know Gideon Emery really wanted to be here, um, but as I said to you just before we came on stream, it is actually his uh, daughter's birthday party this weekend. And I said to him, as long as you get cake, and that's fine by me. And he said there will be cake, so... Um, um, yeah, so I hope he enjoys this cake, um, and, uh, we'll try and enjoy this session. I unfortunately do not have cake to offer. We should have a cake though. Surely like Square would have sent you all like should. a cupcake. Let them eat Anniversary, it. Anniversary, damn it. Yeah. Celebration. That's right. I think it's, it's certainly something that we, we could have done that. I didn't even think of it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I hear the hey, audience. We got Cody. That's cake enough for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, Mal, I came here. I came cake. here for you, John. That's John, cake. you're the going to feed us all, brother. That's cake right there. I'm good. Look at, <laughs> look at this crew. Oh, my God. I'm happy. I'm fanboying out right now. So, look, <laughs> now that we've done the introductions, I'm kind of curious. Of all of you, who's met who already? Like, did any of you pass in the booth at any point? Or do you know each other from previous things? I know John Bentley from like literally 20 years ago. Yeah, Minneapolis, isn't it? Man, we are old. Wow. <laughs> yeah. like Not Minneapolis. Yeah, I, was, but... I was five. <laughs> 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 but yeah, John Bentley and I, we, we took a... We, Classes together, we we uh, have share shared the commercial same commercial agent and everything, and and uh, um, he's always just been one of the kindest, most genuine guys ever. So so and honestly, it's like when I saw the cast list, I didn't actually know John's middle name, so I was just like, "Who's this John Eric Bentley guy?" And then <laughs> all of a sudden, he like popped up on a podcast that I was doing. I was like, "John, I didn't know that was you." So, <laughs> so it was it was, a, it was an awesome. <clears throat> to discover that he was buried in Final Fantasy VII Remake. I remember you so. mentioned that when we, I think it was Pomline 2 when we discussed that, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else know anybody else? Or? I knew ah. Danielle. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I, I knew Danielle previously, and I've met John since we recorded, um, but that's about it. <laughs> I think a lot of um, people will find that weird, right? Like to watch, sorry, Erica, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, no, it's okay. You, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, uh, well, I'm Ma Max and I are really good friends. <laughs> we, we, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I've seen, I've met John, I've met Brianna. I know Danielle. Uh, I've met Cody. I've met Brit. Yeah. I've met most of the people here, mostly at PAX. We're just um, waiting for Max to confirm if that's true now. He's like, you know, he's we're, like, really, no. we're really good <laughs> friends. <laughs> I don't know her. <laughs> no comment. No. Uh, I, I know uh, I, I know Erica from before, clearly, and uh, and Danielle as well. But the rest of the cast, uh, this is my first time saying hi to everybody. I think that oh, must man. be weird for fans, right? Because fans probably watch this and go, "Oh, everyone knows everyone," you know. Like it, it, they just assume that everyone's. A lot of people think you're all in the booth at the same time. We know that's not the case, or they they oh. at least think you're all sat around a table, you know, like kind of when they do like read throughs of scripts and whatever, like you know. But that's just not the case. I was actually surprised about that because this is like this is my first real experience of doing anything like voiceover wise, and I that's how I thought it was going to be. It's like kind of all of us in a room or even just separate booths, like kind of going back and forth. This was a real eye opener to kind of like be playing a scene and creating chemistry with like a very much like just one sided, you know, and and 
fortunately, sometimes we were lucky enough to have other people's dialogue recorded so we could kind of listen and, and kind of play off that. But yeah, it was it was quite surprising. Yeah, I, I can't I like I think that really says a lot about your ability to act to be able to do that in just an isolated booth and not to have all the time to have someone else to re respond to or react to, especially in an emotional scene. So, um, yeah, kudos to all of you guys, because I don't, I don't know how you do it. Um, but we'll be talking a lot about the, uh, you know, the roles and uh, the acting side of things as we get into it. Um, so I'm glad that we've given you guys an opportunity to, or some of you to meet each other for the first time. Um, and I'm sure it's not quite what we'd hoped, but in the year of COVID or the years of COVID, we can only hope that <laughs> I, I see everyone's eyes do the same thing like, yeah. Oh, man. Are you all in LA? Mm -hmm. You're all in California, aren't you? Yeah. Are we all? Okay. I think yeah. so. I don't know. I'm I'm in Midgar, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're swimming in Marco. Yeah. So, um, look, let's jump right into it. Uh, I want to talk to everyone. I'm going to try and jolt around and and do the best I can to um, to manage this. Um, but I'd like to talk about. We're going to like really turn the clocks back. And I know I've spoke to some some of you before about this. Um, and some of you, this is the first time I'm chatting with you, so it's it's really is a delight to have you here. But I want to talk about the role itself. So um, the role, did you get it through an agent? Did you, maybe the easiest thing because of the number of people is if you, if you got it through an agent, just kind of give us a wave, an agent contacted you and said, hey, let's go for this role. Um, I think that I'd like to start <laughs> by going to Cody. Cody, did you know specifically the character in which you were going for when you went for the audition? No, I didn't. Okay, I didn't. so not, not like no information was kind of released to me, which I found you know very strange. I was in the audition room or in the vocal studio, mm -hmm. and I was doing the craziest stuff. And I was wondering, I was like, "What is going on here?" Uh, I was pretending to like take down hordes of enemies and slash a giant sword. I was like, "Man, what, what is what is this?" So I had known. I had no idea. And then, at what point did you actually find out it was Cloud? Um, so I did the audition, uh, and I want to say like two months had gone by. So I had assumed I was like, all right, well, you know, I wasn't that good. So they passed for a good reason, I guess. And you're not um, the first person to have that experience. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure John said you, you've said multiple times. It was quite a while before you heard back, huh, John? Long time. <clears throat> yeah. Long time. I no. So I had assumed time. that I was like, all right, they passed on me for sure. Um, but when they did circle back, they kind of gave me all the information and, then I had a panic attack because <laughs> that's a big role. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, damn. So of all uh, of you in here, I think there. it seems to be a general thing that every most people got it through their agent. Um, how how like does that sound pretty like like right to you that you it took a couple yeah. months to hear back before you knew if you had the role? For sure. Not not me. No, I heard back in two weeks. Oh, I'm like wow. the one person who just He's heard like, back I heard in two weeks. Back tomorrow. What did you really think? Really because he crushed it. <laughs> like you he must have, it. you must have been really good, Austin. You're so good. They're like, just we we gotta have him. I actually I came on board like in like the last like few months of recording. Right. Like, like I came in like like very close to the end. Like we okay. were like I guess just so wrapping they, up. So perhaps I, they just auditioned and I guess they didn't have as much yeah. flexibility in time. Maybe perhaps. Yeah, so they're just like, hey, you're Roche. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> and he crushed it. It was a lot of fun. So um, you have these roles. The thing, and I don't want to talk too much about the audition portion of things because, you know, it's something we've covered quite a lot. But I am really interested to know from each of you how it felt to get the role and when you knew the specific role. Um, you had got so i'm going to work this backwards let's start with you max um you go in you audition you find out you have the part of red 13 um i imagine you're fairly familiar with the final fantasy series um so how are you feeling uh well i i came into um to final fantasy 7 remake i think after everybody here right um when was it exactly do you red, remember um the I was notified that I booked it uh, late 2019, um, and uh, and so I thought that all the roles had been cast, and I, I wasn't even giving it a second thought. And of course, when I got the audition, 
it was a code name. The character was, there was no information on the character. Um, so I, um, I had no idea what I had booked. I got a text from the casting director asking about my availability. And <laughs> she was kind of dropping hints to me. And I was like, I don't know what these hints are because it's all been cast. Why is she dropping these hints? And, um, and then I figured it out. And, uh, uh, and Final Fantasy is a, I've been involved with Final, the Final Fantasy uh, games in the past, but this is arguably, not arguably, this is the biggest role I've had in the Final Fantasy series. So, um, so I was super stoked. And I was, I was actually, when I found out about <laughs> uh, this, I was hanging out with my friends, Ray Chase and Robbie Damon, who were the leads of Final Fantasy 15. So um, I brought it up to them and they were like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> uh, so it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. I could, I can only, I can't, I can, I, I can imagine Ray, like I can see, I can see Ray and Robbie re- responding to that quite, quite lively for <laughs> yeah. sure. You know, it's funny that you mentioned Robbie because he's actually in the booth with me right now. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. There, doesn't everybody have a Robbie Damon body pillow? They should. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Danielle, I'm going to come back to you in a second because I want to talk about uh, the roles that are new to the remake and same with uh, with Austin and Mallory. We'll, we'll, we'll treat that as a separate question. Um, Erica, you find out you got the role of Jesse. You've had a lot of big roles. How are you feeling? Were you, were you just thinking, oh, it's just another job or are you, are you thinking, wow, this is, this is, this is, I'm feeling the pressure? Well, my story is a little different because I've been on this project for five and a half years at this point because of the trailers so, right because of the tr- because of the trailers uh jesse actually had the first line in the english trailer of ff7 uh back for the they were doing one for the playstation experience i was a relative unknown i would think i was a year out of college um and i and i booked it and i um i wasn't i was familiar with final fantasy 7 and the final fantasy universe but i didn't know who jesse was uh because i had never played the original game um but I knew I knew what it was when I auditioned for it. It was pretty easy to figure out. Um, I went in and I did the trailer, and uh, like literally four and a half years passed. Wow! And um, you know, we were we were like, is it going to get made? Am I still going to be on it at the end? I don't get excited about anything until it's all signed, sealed, and delivered. Right. So, right. Uh, so I, you know, I I remember, yeah, I remember being at the at pa not sorry not at Pax at um. Oh my God, what was it? Oh God, E3 with, mm-hmm. with Brianna and, uh, and a few other people and the cast list dropped. And I remember it was just like the, cra- please forgive my cats. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're so very cute. I just see. I love them. I never apologize for a cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so, I mean, it, it's been a weird, I feel like my entire voiceover journey, ha- Jesse's been a part of just because she's always just been there in the back of my mind. Like, is this going to get made? And then to have her have such an expanded role as opposed to the original game. Um, it just, it's just a dream come true, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been long a long dream. time. It's been 84 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, John? I'm going to try and move it around, give certain questions to certain people or unfortunately we'll be here like seven hours. So John, what about right. you? I'll go quick. I was excited. Uh, I think it was Rita. Rita was our casting director. She called and it was after a while, like Cody said, and I was like, ah, because I was texting the whole time. Hey, did they cash yet? Did they cash yet? Did they cash yet? Because I, you know, played the game back in the day when it first came out. Um, and then she called and left a message, I called her back, and she was like, hey, um, are, are, you, are you, you good? And I'm like, yeah, nah, I could tell by your voice we didn't get it. She's like, are you sitting down? I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. You know, everything's fine. She's like, you know, when you come in and do the role, and I'm like, what? What? And she's like, when you when you come in to do it, I just need to make sure that you know which booth. We, I'm, what? We got it. She's like, yeah, you got it. And she knew that she jacked me up. So I'm running all around the doggone house, yelling, Michelle, Michelle, we got it, boys, we got it, we got it. And my my son's like, what's wrong, Dad? You okay? I'm like, we got the roll, we got Final Fantasy. And they're like, Barrett? I'm like, yeah, Barrett. And they're like, the one you used to play? I'm like, yeah, the one. You used to play. And they're like, oh my god, oh my god. So it was one of those deals. So really cool. I was super excited about it. What about and you? in E3, I got to meet. Um, Erica and Breezy and Cody and that was Pax, wasn't it? No, no, that E3. was E3. Oh, oh no, yeah, E3. E3 as well. Like okay. Thing. Oh, right, yeah. for the theater was, thing. Oh yeah, I was yeah. just thrilled. Well, we'll talk about the theater a little bit later on. Um, okay. Sorry, John. 
<laughs> That's okay. Just complain to your agent afterwards. Um, <laughs> I'm not complaining. Brit, let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about uh, finding out that you had the role of Tifa. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had auditioned. I went in, and then I didn't hear anything. Like a lot of people for a long time, and then I had an audition for a smaller role in the game. So I thought I definitely didn't get Tifa, but that's fine. And then my agent calls right before E3 to tell me I had Tifa, but at the time I didn't understand. I thought it was for the smaller roles. So I thought, it's great, I'll go in for a day or two, not realizing initially what it meant <laughs> that it was gonna be like that. <laughs> but I didn't make it to E3 because I found out so, I don't know if I was the last cast, but I found out pretty um, late, yeah. It was, it was a long, long time. So, the, so I don't know. So you, the, the magnitude of your role was probably a bit of a surprise then when the time came. Oh, it was shock. I mean, I had to keep repeating. What do you mean? I, I teeth, <laughs> teeth. But I think video games work. They generally, in my experience, are kind of slow until they're super fast. So it's a lot of waiting. Did I get recast? I did a trailer, you know. Yeah. Um, so they kept us on our toes, I guess. <laughs> What about you, Brianna? Same story. I auditioned, a lifetime went by, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, well. Um, and then I got an email that I got it, and I, it just felt like the room started spinning. Like my whole world, I knew that my life was about to change because I did know what I was going in for. I knew what it meant when they said, you booked it. Yeah, I can, I can, well, I can't imagine. Uh, I mean, I can, I can, <laughs> I can try, but I, I don't think I can. What about you, Vic? Um, I did not find, I, I, I auditioned, time went by, you know, and, and with us voice actors, you know, we're blessed to get a good number of auditions and we just sort of try to push it out of our heads after we've auditioned because we don't know what's going to happen. And if we think about every single one, we'll drive ourselves crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, Quite a long time afterwards, I found out that I booked it, but I still didn't know what it was. So I was like, okay, cool, wonderful. Um, and I went into the studio and I still didn't know what it was. And finally, when I'm like just about to step into the booth, they're, they're like, this is Final Fantasy. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> So, so yeah, you guys, you guys all got the benefit of hearing beforehand. I didn't find out till I was just about to record. So. Wow. That's crazy. So you like literally walk into the booth and they're like, yeah, this is Final Fantasy. And you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, all, all of a sudden it's just like, you know, I try to keep calm and I'm and I'm usually pretty calm. <laughs> but then like all of a sudden I'm just like, holy cow. I wanted to just scream in the booth, but um, <laughs> I imagine. It, was a, it was a nice surprise. Now That's to funny. twist it up a little bit with uh, Mallory, Danielle and Austin, these were not parts from the original. These were newly casted parts. So I'm kind of wondering if the dynamic in your fill was slightly different. So let's start with Austin. Austin, you know, um, Roche is a completely brand new character who's quite focused. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what was it like to find out that you were taking on a new role? Not only in, I, I mean, I'm slightly biased, but it is one of the most iconic games ever made. Um, mm -hmm. no, no pressure, Cody. You're only the main voice actor. <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to talk to you about that shortly. I don't even know how you can uh, handle that kind of pressure. But that hard conversation. Well, yeah. When when you leave here, you'll need some pills for anxiety. When I'm finished telling you the <laughs> pressure. Um, but Austin, what did it feel like going into like a major franchise like this, a major remake, and having a completely brand new role? Um, so it was, there was a lot of pressure because like when I auditioned for it, it was very clear from the language. I'm like, this is Final Fantasy seven. And so I'm just like, there's no way I'm going to book this. And then my agent called me and I booked it. And I like, I actually like cried because I'd been dealing with some serious, like imposter syndrome and depression. And so I'm just like, oh my God. So I cried and I came in and I was just like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm playing this, playing this new soldier. I bet he's in, you know, he's not, he's going to be in for maybe like, you know like a minute and then he's gonna die <laughs> um but then i then i'm just like oh wait no i get to like share scenes with cloud okay <laughs> and so i was like freaking out um and then i i the entire time i was in the booth i just had like a big smile on my face because i'm just like this is this is something that i grew up with holy shit mm -hmm. it was it was it was like a little bit of pressure going in but like as soon as we started recording i'm just like 
No, there's no pressure. This is a lot of fun. I mean, it, it sounds was, like the yeah. way you voice it, it sounds like you really enjoyed it. Like, oh, yeah. I, I absolutely just lost my mind the entire time. And thankfully, the character fed into that. that. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because one of my questions later will be, is there any, you know, any of you in the character? And uh, I'll certainly be coming to you on, on that part. Um, uh-huh. Danielle, one of the things that um, the remake did very well was to try and expand on the city of Midgar to try and give it a lot more um, substance to make it feel like a real place and a lot of that was based on the side quests and stories Um, and obviously Gwen makes up a a portion of the experiences uh, in the slums what was it like taking on that role? It was definitely, uh, so I kind of came into this kind of weird. I didn't audition for her. Um, I did a project with the same studio about a year ago. And then Rita came up to me and asked me, hey, you're available to come in on Tuesday for this hour. And like, yeah, sure. And I come in, they didn't tell me what I was recording for. And then they showed me the script and I'm like, wait, there's Shinra and Tifa. This can't be anything other than Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. And we recorded <laughs> you know, that. Really and then bad rip-off game that's going to get sued very quickly. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so after I recorded that, um, I cried for like an hour in the bathroom. After I saw my paperwork, I just cried. And then like a day after that was my sister's like wedding. So I'm like, this is great. This wow. is great. <laughs> Uh, it must have been. It must, I mean, it's a it's a huge game. It's a huge franchise. Mallory, uh, your character, which I I'm gonna dig into much more later, um, was a character that didn't exist and is a really mm-hmm. unique character. Let's face it, um, real sass, major amount of sass. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. D- were you familiar with Final Fantasy VII previously before this? Um, well, my experience with this whole thing, I, I was not. Okay. So this for this whole this whole time, first of all, when I I auditioned for the role, didn't hear from my agent. I would say for about like five months, five six months went by wow. until I got an email like Brianna saying that I booked it, and I was like, okay, cool. I don't even know what I mean. It was a code name, obviously, and I was like, I don't really know what I booked, but yay, cool. And I actually found out like Vic. I was walking into my recording session. And I was talking to the vocal director and then the writers were talking. And then I turn around and I look at the screen and then I saw a huge outline of cloud, right? And I looked at the screen and then I looked back at, at them and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, is it? And they were like, and they literally looked at me and they were like, <laughs> and so I was like, okay. Uh, I will not say anything, but that's how I found out. I found out it was Final Fantasy. And to be honest, I didn't know how big this Final Fantasy franchise is. Ooch. I had no idea until finally, like, I was getting these tweets and, and I'm like, who wants to tweet me? What What's going on? And then all of a sudden I was getting these tweets and all this stuff about Final Fantasy. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And just to be a newbie in this whole franchise, like, I am just, I am just so, well, I heard myself again. That was really weird. Um, but to be a newbie in this whole franchise, I, I just feel so grateful to be amongst like all these talented voice actors. It just I'm just so grateful to be here. So this is for me, it's just And I found that actually to be the case with the cast in general. Everyone seems so grateful for the role. And I think that that's why I think that's why the cast works. I think that's why the cast um, works so well with the community. Uh, that's why events like this right now can happen, right? Where we can all be together. Now we're talking about, uh, you know, auditions and finding out you've got the role. Cody, I just want to, like, really, you know, put the pressure on as heavy as I can. Were you familiar with the Final Fantasy series previously? Like, uh, do you game? Like, how old did you say you are? 25, did you say? 20, 25. Okay, yeah, so... 25. Um, I'm a, yeah, I'm a huge gamer, but I've always been at like different consoles, right? Like I, I was like first person shooters basically. Like I grew up, I'm like a Halo kid. I, I, my first like experience gaming was like Halo, you know, back in like 2000, I think it was. Um, so I was familiar with the world of Final Fantasy. Um, I knew what it was, but I had never like dug deep into it. Um, so the first person I actually called when I found out was my older brother, because my older brother is a huge fanatic. Um, got him on the phone. I told him what it was. And I was like, dude, like, I'm, I was like, I'm scared. Like, I don't, this is huge. I don't even know where to start. And I owe it to my brother for pretty much lining up the 
first about of like information and resources for me. He was like, all right, all right, I got you, man. You're going to start here. You're going to watch this. You're going to research this. You're going to take this out. So like, you know, um, I just very quickly started studying up on everything. And I actually started by, cause I never played the original. So I started by watching uh, a YouTube like walkthrough gameplay of like the original Final Fantasy seven that came out in 97. So I started there um, did a bunch of research, just kind of found out like the character, the relationships, the world in which they live. Um, and then I went and watched the Avon children just to kind of get like a feel and a vibe for everything. But no, man, I had to do, I had to do a lot of research and, uh, I did it very diligently because I knew, you know, the, the, the expectation, I mean, is, is, is through the roof. Like I am, you know I am slightly biased. I get that. Um, but I think even like if I try and stand back from that perspective, Final Fantasy is one of the biggest franchises in games ever, and the, and Final Fantasy VII is like one of the most. I, I think it will honestly be one of the most iconic. It's up there with things like you know. I know it sounds silly to compare, but like Pac Man, you know, like these are iconic yeah. games that people will remember for hundreds of years or as long as our crazy society will last. Um, like Cloud. I I can't even imagine someone calling you or dropping you an email and going, I got cloud. I would have just been like, holy shit. Like, what do I, yeah. like, it's such a massive role. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. you know, like, I mean, I, I, I just so can't like, imagine. At first, at first, right? So, like, when I was told, I was like, okay, cool. This is awesome. Like, who is this guy, right? And then as soon as I started digging into the research of it all, that's when the panic started setting in because I was like, oh my gosh, like this is huge. This is this is a massive character. And and like the biggest thing for me, right, is I went into it and I was like, I'm gonna do my very best because I understand what it feels like to be a fan, right? And to have a connection to a video game that you are passionate about. And my biggest concern was like, all right, I need to make sure that the fan base can enjoy this experience. I don't want to let anybody down. Mm. Uh, and that kind of like, that weighed on me very, very heavily. You, you didn't let anyone um, down. You did a phenomenal job. I haven't had an Cody, you sound, yeah. Cody, 100%. you sound so natural in the role. And mm -hmm. I, I can't articulate this well, but um, it, it's, it's, you're still able to, to communicate the intent of the character without doing, it's like, you know, on camera, how you can communicate an intent with a look, but you do that in the game with your voice. And it's, it's, uh, it's admirable. It's really cool. Thank you so much. 100%. Thank you. I, I got to speak it. up on I mean, this. I was surrounded in, in the best company. You know what I mean? Like it, the only reason I was able to pull off half their performances is like, I was sitting there listening to everybody. I was very fortunate. Like I had a lot of recording to play off of. So I would literally listen to everybody's, you know, what they had done and kind of just, you know, roll with that. So I was very fortunate to be able to work off of everyone. Cody spoke to me at E3 and he was saying the exact same thing he's saying to everybody right now about how nervous he was and everything else. But then we started talking and I started listening to what he was saying about the preparation. And so since then, whenever I would see him in passing in the booth or <laughs> Thanksgiving even, Cody, remember that? Um, we <laughs> shared uh, how, how he approached everything. And then I found out how he approached his research and his music, how he approached his research and all of his roles, how he studied, how he focused. And I was amazed because he's a kid. <laughs> to me, he's a kid. He's a kid in this. Vic, you know what I'm talking about when we were babies. When we started. This dude does like triple the work to get it right on every project that he's in at multiple times. And I've never seen that kind of work ethic in someone that young. So. I'm tipping my hat off to you in front of the world right now because that's the kind of kid he is and expect him to do humongous things. Humongous I cry things. right now, John. Oh, no, no. Truth is truth. Super bro. emotional. Truth is truth. And I'm going to speak up really quick because, Cody, I've known you actually for very many years since you were little. I swear it's been like 10 or more years. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I agree with John because, Cody, you have always been such an amazing just actor in general growing up you you have this just this raw just really this this talent that you've always had it so mm -hmm. i mean i i wouldn't i'm i you being this i can't believe this is your first like video game because you were just amazing 
but I, I, I don't doubt it at all. I mean, I've known you for so long and I knew you're going to kill it. Thank you. you. You did. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Fun little Easter egg on that. Right. So like we used to go to the same acting class when okay. I was a little baby, literally before, like, like I would have to get rides home from her. Cause like, you know, my mama dropped me off and then I have to go to like work or something yeah. like that. And she used to like, it was drive almost like home. his babysitter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Literally. For sure. So like, so, imagine the surprise, right? I come out the booth and I'm like, wait, you're who? And like, we had both like <laughs> recorded those scenes. I was like, oh my gosh, this oh, is crazy. It certainly makes the hand massage a lot more awkward than it was 10 minutes ago. But oh my <laughs> God. Alex, yeah. can you be, can you imagine have a babysitter like Madam Mal? <laughs> can, can i imagine having uh well, john that's an after oh after stream i know get, 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 out, get it out of here, get it out of here. <laughs> sorry been, mal i didn't mean to make him go there it's been I a long it's been a long <laughs> covid period let's let's hey let's, don't worry i know <laughs> breathe through worry. it but yeah cody you did a fantastic <laughs> job so and, and we're delighted that you could join us i was so pleased that you uh you agreed to be here today so if i don't have another opportunity you nailed the role and uh, no pressure because it's like one of the most iconic characters of all time and uh honestly i couldn't i couldn't have enjoyed the remake anymore you nailed it sir so I keep it up it, so you tell sean to make this not your only damn opportunity to be available for the CooperCon folks in person <laughs> i'm just saying because you know i know sean is within earshot you know i'm not i know i'm not supposed to reveal the behind the scenes get thing the whip out. sean you know you got to get that boy on the road so he can hang with us so look, hey, so let's, let's move on and let's talk about uh, the announcement of the actual game. So um, all the recordings done took a long time. I think for, for many of you, you were in the booth for a year. Does that sound about right? I know, Erica, you were in and out for a very long period of time, but would, would a year sound about right? I mean, Cody, you probably had the most lines out of everyone. I know... I know how many sessions I did. I ended up doing 60 sessions. Um, and how long is a session? A couple of hours or three, four hours? Four hours. <laughs> four hours. Four All right, hours John, for... chill out. <laughs> hour session. Think, what kind of game do you think we're making? I, I yeah. don't know. Look, I've, look, the only place on the West Coast I've been is Vancouver. And I find people on the West Coast are so chilled and relaxed. And they're oh, just no, like, no. it's I'm, like we got work to do. It's like, hours. no, just take it easy. We got all the time mm -hmm. in the world. Mm. <laughs> no, I would, I would say like what, like eight, eight months, six, eight months, I think would be like a safe bet. I'm honestly like, I honestly can't even remember at this point. Feel free to speak up, folks, if you if you yeah. have a. But I, I mean, think we, I think we started uh, probably if you want to add it up that way, Cody's probably right. But it took maybe a year and a few months, you know, with scheduling and everything. Wouldn't you guys say? Yeah. It was less. I, I had. Because I don't think ahead, I yeah. June at least at least for me. And then it was like spotty. It would be like a month off and then like 500 sessions in one month. And yeah, I, I had to do some stuff before E3 because Jesse did some promotional stuff for the, mm -hmm. for the demo. Uh, but I, we did, I didn't actually, I don't think unless I'm insane, really start recording until after the E3 announcement, like really hit it hard. Um, but I honestly, like, I don't remember anything pre pandemic. Like this has been my whole life <laughs> as far as I know. So yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. I mean, when the remake came out, everyone was, I mean, we, I was in lockdown. I I, I think uh, California was in lockdown. In fact, there's a there's an image of me in my dressing gown. Every Brit has a dressing gown. That's a robe to North Americans. I've had my dressing gown since I was 12 years old. It's my, it's my blankie. It's my comfort. There's me all wrapped up with a beard down here because I haven't seen another soul in like, you know, God knows how many months playing the remake. That's how most people would have experienced the remake in what I like to call Yeti form. Um, so the game is, let's, before, before we get to release, let's go back. We've got the announcement. So the game comes out and your name is attached to the character. So um, how are you feeling? Somebody tell me how, how the moment was feeling. Let's go with, well, Bri let's start with Brianna. Brianna, you, you already knew that you had the role. Um, the announcement comes out that you are Aerith. Uh, a huge role, very impactful story for a female character without going into too many spoilers. Um, what was the 
immediate reaction from people? How are you feeling as that announcement went out and your name was locked into that character? So Erica kind of alluded to this, but we were actually sitting next to each other in the theater when the cast list was dropped. And I had been, it had been implied that our involvement in it was going to be announced at this event, but I thought, you know, they'd have it up on the screen. I didn't realize they were sending a press release to all of the press outlets via email. And so Erica is on her phone and she starts getting all of this love that she's involved in it. And she's like, the cast list dropped. And I like open my Twitter and there's nothing. And I'm like, they recast me. Like even up to that moment, like my voice is in the trailer and I'm like, they recast me. I'm done here. (laughs) It wasn't probably until hours later, like in the middle of that like reception that they had after the actual screening that, that the people started noticing. How many of you were um, at the, at the theater for E3? It was Erica, Cody, John, and I. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Oof, uh, it was crazy. Been, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I w- only watched the stream, but the crowd reaction, I mean, you can only hear so much through a microphone, but it was like, it was, you know, there was a hell of a grunt in there. <laughs> you, John, yeah, you were was, sat, it, John was sat yes. next to a, weren't you sat next to somebody in press, I think, who didn't know who you were until it all clicked? Yeah, I sat right behind Erica and, and Breezy, and there was a guy from, I think, Mexico, um, and he he turned and, and looked, and he was like, was that? Is it? And he started kind of like crying. I'm like, it's good, it's good. We good, man. We good, we good, we good. Yeah, that was yeah, it's coming out. But yeah, the crowd noise was really cool. Very, very electric in there. I yeah, they like started that. with remake. That was the first trailer that they showed. Mm-hmm. And both the lower floor and the upper floor just went absolutely crazy. I mean, and it was like just we were both in the laughing. trailer too. It was it was nuts. Like just it hearing everybody's voices. <laughs> the roar was was insane. And then as the press conference went on, there were they were showing other things and I'm just like hyped to be there. I love video games. I'm like cheering for other things. And at that point I realized the lower floor is all press, which is where we were. And the upper floor is all like cosplayers, fans, special guests. And so I'm like later on in the press conference, the only one cheering for the other stuff on the lower floor. (laughs) I guess I better be quiet now was my thought. (laughs) So for those of you who weren't in the theater when the game came out now, I don't know. Obviously, I think the press release that first went out just had so many roles like, you know, X, Y and Z. Um, Danielle, was your name announced for Gwen the day that I think because I think you dropped a tweet the day it came out. The game dropped. Is that right? Yeah. As soon as the game dropped, I was able to announce my involvement in the game. And you had a huge reaction on Twitter from that. It was crazy. And I think when I finished the game, I saw the credits. It just kind of broke down for like a good while. And I'm like, just seeing everybody, all my friends in here, and then I'm in here, and we're all in this game together. It just, it got super emotional. What about you, Vic? When did the, when, when did it, when were you tied into your character? Um, yeah. So I, I got released a little bit later after the, the leads, of course. And what I just remember is like clicking on my Twitter and going, wow, I don't, normally get (laughs) that many notifications you know and and then and then what was really what has just been wonderful throughout this whole process is just getting individual messages from people who play the game who have played this this game and and how much my character means to them you know and i i know he's not uh i know song is not uh cloud or barrett or, or anything like that but but everybody's got you know, their favorites. And it's wonderful knowing that what I do really feeds them and, and, and helps them and, and, and makes them happy. It's, it's incredibly gratifying. I think that, you know, I know what you're saying about, you know, the role being a smaller role, but the the remake worked so well, in my opinion, I mean, you guys are all going to be probably slightly biased, but it worked because everybody worked. I don't think that there was a weak role in the remake at all. Like everyone was just like spot on. And I think with characters like Barrett, Tifa, Aerith, Cloud, Sung, you 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 had an expectation of what they would sound like. You, you had an idea of how the character would be, and everything just 
fit and it just worked right so Mallory when did your name drop um, I would say kind of around the same time, you know, like Vic was saying for his character. Because I remember the key on. artwork went up around the same time as Sung, I think I, I recall. Yeah, the trio. Yeah. Uh, they announced the trio, the new trio. And um, honestly, my experience is the same as Vic's. I I didn't know how, how big this franchise was until I was getting all these Twitter messages. And I, I don't really use Twitter. So for me, I had to like... I had to like open it up and then I was like, oh my gosh, maybe I need to change my appearance on Twitter because now people are looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, so let me change my picture and let me actually make it look presentable. Um, and then it really just was, it was so gratifying too for me as well to see like how this new character really resonated with people and just to be welcomed in this community and just how open the Final Fantasy community is. I, I felt so welcomed and... I, I keep saying I'm grateful because, and it's like a broken record, but I am. So for me, it was just, it was really, really cool. Cool. Uh, Austin, what about, now I remember they announced Roche quite early, didn't they? They didn't name him to begin with because everyone was like, um, who's the guy on the bike? Like, I remember everyone was like freaking out. Who's the guy on the bike? Yeah, because they actually showed Roche like a couple weeks before I recorded Roche. They right. like showed like the, that, that shot of him with Cloud with uh, Jesse saying, "Who's that?" And Cloud's going, "A soldier." And I'm just like, "Oh, that's me! Like that's that's my dude! Like oh gosh! Like they're actually showing him in the trailer. He must be important." Um, but like when we got to announce it, uh, like I think like two or three weeks before the actual game dropped, um, I was like, <laughs> I was like freaking out because like I'm just like, "Oh my gosh!" Like you know, I get I get announced like alongside all these people who I've looked up to for. Uh, for years and so like and it was seeing the the cast list fuller like i'm just like oh my gosh like this is like seriously like it was already a great cast it's like this is like an all-star cast um so that was that kind of added the pressure to it and then like when the game came out early in australia and the reaction started coming out where a couple people didn't think that you know, roche was great i was like oh no i blew it and then it came out everywhere else, and I started getting all these messages about how Roche was like their favorite new addition to the game, and it just made you know it made the experience so just like oh my gosh, like it was already like important to me, and I would have been proud of it, no matter what the response was. I think it was um, a needed character but, because you didn't really have you. I mean, you had Cloud, you had Sephiroth, you had the idea of Soldier Zach, if you if you yeah. know the compilation. But there wasn't many main characters of the same category, right? So it, yeah, it did add to it. You don't really it. get to see. You don't get to really, really get to see other than those characters. Like, how does the Soldier program affect you know the the non central characters? Um, like, because it affects everybody pretty differently. Um, so it was cool getting to like see that and um, kind of embody that. Yeah. And it was, it was really cool. It was really, really cool. Like when I got to see that, I'm not just like, you know, like a grunt, I'm like a capital S soldier. I'm like, Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Max, I know, I feel like red was the last one to be announced. Am I wrong? Of the, of the like, you're because I know that didn't you hint at it at one point? No. no. Oh God, no. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> I, I would. I have never hinted at anything. I feel I like there was a tweet that NDAs that yeah. will that will end my career yeah. if I do okay. anything when like I that. When I say hinted, so I'm I think... putting out, I'm putting down that rumor right now. <laughs> I think. I think when I okay, let me rephrase. I think people had a feeling it was you, um, and then and then it came out. But go on, you tell me. Uh, I I would disagree with that. I'm okay. I'm I'm on Twitter. I, I look at what people say. Uh, nobody guessed me. Uh, I was I was doing some googling, some researching, and um, I don't think anybody had actually uh, had actually guessed that it was me, which was pretty cool because um, at this point I feel like a lot of my fans uh, are able to hear my voice and go, Ah, that's Max. But I got him on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. My mod just corrected me. I, I will I will slap myself multiple times with the Buster Sword <laughs> as punishment. I was gonna say, yeah, Cody, where's your Buster Sword? I got one. I like, need to get one of yeah. those. Yeah, it's, it's, you can pick it up, swing it around. It's great. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't suggest it. It's, I actually broke the tip of it by swinging it around, but it's still fun. 
<laughs> so I thought before we take a small break, because um, I'm sure that everybody could do with a glass of water, I thought it might be fun um, if we could do a little bit of a game. Um, at Coopercom, we do uh, fates or ATEs, we call them active time events. And I thought we could do one that we were going to call, uh, we were going to call it Roll and Reverse. So I have um, at hand the script from the remake. And I thought what we could do is we could try and reenact a few scenes as your characters, as they were meant to be. And then maybe what we could do is try reversing or picking complete different people to take the role and to try and fill it now i'm sure if you're filled with you know if you've got gut-wrenching pain now because you're going to have to do something uncomfortable just know that the thousand people watching are just living for this moment <laughs> so hopefully you can see the chat window that is um, part of this call um i'm going to start with this one which is between cloud and Aerith. So at the time was marked as Flower Peddler, which is right from the beginning of the game. Cody, Brianna, can you see that? Uh, yeah, I, I just put it on the chat. Okay, no pressure. <laughs> so we've purposely picked oh. stuff from very early on in the game. Sorry, Max. And uh, we wanted to avoid spoilers. So we've gone with something that's very well known. It's from the trailer, you know? Um, so, yeah. No, we'll let we'll, we'll just look, look. We'll let you go for it. Are you comfortable to try this? Oh, so yeah. now I'm. I'm no, the you, you're you're, gonna, you're still going to be Cloud for now, and Brianna <laughs> oh, will be Aerith, oh. and then <laughs> okay. we'll, then we'll we'll mix it up. Then you can pick somebody else. You can decide who plays Cloud, and Brianna can decide who plays Aerith, and you can pick whoever you want. Yeah, oh, I already know. Okay, so uh, let's okay. try it the normal way first. Let's okay. see. Let's see why you got this part. Impress us. <laughs> Okay. Hey, are you okay? I'm fine. Here, this is for you. A flower? That's right. It's a gift. You know, for scaring those things away. What things? Never mind. Think of it as a memento. Just my luck. I heard that, you know. Very nice. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. That is one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Really I iconic. Agree. It's yeah. so sweet. I auditioned with that scene. It's very special to me. So we're about to spoil it for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is kind of one of those things where you had, like, if I had, a, if I had an empty bottle now, I'd be spinning it and everyone would be half cut. And so, Cody, you may select someone yeah. to take the role of Cloud. And Brianna, okay. you may select anyone in this chat to do Aerith. Please pick John. And <laughs> you may pick anyone you like. Wait, okay, Brianna, you pick first. Um, I, I want to hear Mallory do it, actually. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So I used to do, <laughs> I used to do Barrett's lines. Thanks, Brianna. And he used to do mine. All the time. So yeah, I'm going to have, I'm going to have John do it. Do you want me to do it like Cody would do it? Or do you want me to do it like Barrett? Oh no, do it like you think Cloud would do it. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my God. Hold on. All right. I am Brianna now. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh okay here we go <clears throat> hey are you okay i'm fine here um this is for you <laughs> a flower that's right it's a gift Things away. What things? Never mind. Think of it as a memento. Just my luck. I heard that, you know. That was a <laughs> <laughs> wow. I couldn't I couldn't hold amazing. my laughter. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 so good. 
Because I've never done it in front of Cody. I was like, always. Oh, I've crazy. never done it in front of Brianna, so I'm like. <laughs> I, I feel like I should have asked everyone <laughs> so to grab a piece of paper. Like I almost wanted Max to like lift up a piece of paper that had like seven written on it or six, you know, rating yeah. like <laughs> scorecards. 10 out of 10, 15 oh. out of 10. Okay, let's try this one. This is a good one. Max this... is my favorite character, by the way. <laughs> Red, seven. Red, oh, is, thank Red you. is a great character. Yeah, my really. Character. Oh, and we'll, I'll be talking to you, Max, about how you pulled the voice off a little bit later. Um, so the next one uh, is the scene where uh, Barrett and Cloud are in the elevator. This is like one of my favorite moments from the demo. I absolutely adore this because it was the first time where John had really like, I felt like Barrett was the most intimidating character. So you can play out the real part and then we'll flip it around and let someone else try it. Okay. You ready, Cody? Yeah, let's do it. By the way, John, I really enjoyed your version of Cloud. It was like kind of like it reminded me of like something that had been ripped out of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> no man, I had to listen. I got I had the privilege privilege of having Cody's voice for a lot of my lines, which was a blessing. So you knew how to play off of it, mm -hmm. so it didn't do yeah. anything crazy. Well, at least we know if Cody decides he doesn't want to do it anymore. John, you can just you no. do both roles. No, I can't replace that man. Uh. -uh. He's he's a man. He got it down. Okay, All right, let, you ready? Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I can't remember this thing. This pump's sole purpose is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you shit. It's here sucking up the Mako. The Mako. How did I mess that up? It doesn't <laughs> it doesn't rest and it doesn't care. You do realize what Mako is, don't you? Mako is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me. You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can. You really hear that? Damn straight I do. Get help. Say that again? I'd worry less about the planet more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Well, the reason I did the screaming is because in the anime, the Japanese guys move so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now let's reverse. Uh, Cody, you may pick somebody, and John, you may pick somebody. Oh, to play uh, Barrett? Uh, oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got, John. I want to hear... Erica, uh, do better. Uh, yeah. Erica's face. <laughs> Between you and Britt. You and Britt. No, no, no. You choose Erica because I got Britt. Okay. Oh, done. Good. done deal. Yeah. Good. Oh, okay. Good. I, all right. <laughs> Come on, uh, Diesel. Uh, um, all right. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I hear you fine. Yes. My gain might peak. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Listen to me. This pump's sole purpose is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you shit. It's here, sucking up the Mako. It doesn't rest and it doesn't care. You do realize what Mako is, don't you? Mako is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me. Like you and me bleed red. I know how to read lines. <laughs> <laughs> the hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You're gonna stand there and pretend... Yeah. You're gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? Damn straight I do. Get help. Say that again! I'd worry less about the planet and more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Ah! Boom. Oh, that was good. Oh, I enjoyed that. That was That's good. A ten. That's a ten. Uh, ten yeah. point. Oh. <laughs> and then she hit him with a roller skate. <laughs> oh I tried to do my cool boy voice. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a YouTube moment. <laughs> Erica, Erica. Erica. 
You that was real throwing. Oh, so. oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's actually just technique. It doesn't hurt. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, look, we'll try awesome. one more and then um, maybe we'll try some after we've uh, had a break and um, whatnot. We've got, I've got quite a few options here. Uh, mm, da -dum -dum. Oh, Actually, you know, we could beautiful. do, we could do, no, we'll save that one for later. Let's do this one. Like um, Barrett, have Danny, uh, me this me. one like... um, is quite a, quite a moment. Where's my window? Too many windows. Okay, this is between um, Roche and Jesse. I think oh, there may be a little bit of cloud in there too. Mm. The three-parter. All right. Let's give this one a shot. This look familiar? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is on the, the on bike. the bike. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To I'm gonna up. turn way the hell down for this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would <laughs> remind viewers to adjust their sets accordingly. Yeah. Headset warning. All right. Zoom will turn you down. Too quick for the eye. You cross him, you die. Now, mind if I cut in? Whoa, splendid. I've been looking for a new dance partner. Private party, huh? That's fine. I'll settle for a race then. Just one. You talking to me? I most certainly am. Then no. Oh, so terribly sorry. Your world's failed to reach my ears, sluggish and slow as they are. What's this guy's deal? The lady's curiosity has been piqued. My name is Roche, but you may address me by the more accurate appellation, Speed Demon. I don't, I don't know what this line means. Heard that, huh? Heard, heard that, that huh? huh? Oh, heard that, huh? My ears are attuned to the feminine voice. Oh, this guy is the worst. Yes, yes, this is the contest I've been waiting for. Very good. Ooh. Very nice. Fun fact about the about the script. Um, whenever somebody replies to Roche, the script direction is nobody likes Roche. <laughs> <laughs> Such an animated oh, character. I love him. Well, look, I've got. I'm sorry. I, I got to step out really quickly because I have a toddler that is just futzing with all my oh. with all my. Oh. <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine. It he works just out. doesn't want to get picked. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was rigged, nice, but yeah. <laughs> Well, look, actually, it, uh, that was about half the sketches I had. Oh, so this is this is the perfect time to take a break. So, look, we're going to take a five minute break, folks. Gives us a chance to, um, you know, grab a glass of water, maybe go to the toilet um, or wrangle up the kids, whatever needs to be done. So we'll be back in five minutes. See you in a second, folks.
Okay, we're back, folks. Sorry, slightly longer than uh, anticipated. Um, Max was enjoying his protein bar, and we certainly didn't want to get in between that. Um, but we're back, everyone's like, Throw me again. under the bus. <laughs> it was a good look, and he even said he was going to send all of us a protein bar. How nice of him. Everyone am, in the chat gets a protein bar, too. That's true. Yeah, no, um, I meant the cast. Just... And, okay. I heard him say the whole stream. So that's what I thought he said. Right? And on top of that, Erica yeah. said she's going to send a cat to everybody who's watching as well. Which I'm, I, I was... have enough cats for everyone <laughs> who's watching this stream right now. I remember your cats were quite curious last time you were on. They were all over the yeah. shop, but they were certainly more lively at the beginning of this stream. So. Yeah. Here we are. Okay, well, look, let's continue. Um, the last, before our little break there, we were talking about uh, when the game was first announced. I'd like to talk about now where we are today. Uh, the game has been out for an entire year. I can hardly get my head around that. Um, it's it's quite mind-boggling. I think it's even more mind-boggling because we've practically been locked down for what has been a year. Um, so yeah, how are we feeling? A year? It must be. It's a, you know, for I know that many of you have got amazing. Well, not many of you. All of you have got incredible careers. But still, Final Fantasy VII must be a big part of it. Whatever other parts you've played. A year on, how are you feeling? Let's start with uh, Mallory. Him unmuted. Good. <clears throat> Thanks, Cody. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, how am I feeling? Uh, still the same. <laughs> I still feel overwhelmed with uh, this uh, recognition for being, you know, a, a newbie character in the Final Fantasy franchise. So nothing really for me has changed except, I'm, yeah, really, actually nothing. I'm still overjoyed over here what about you vic um very grateful uh incredibly just feels very blessed to be part of this fantastic um franchise and getting to meet the different actors as well as the different fans the this incredible community it's wonderfully gratifying um and i'm very grateful um i will say the pandemic has been difficult um and uh and I think there's a lot of us who are who are uh, who are suffering mentally uh, and, and emotionally, and uh, and it's a, it's a tough thing. And I just want to tell everybody that uh, I know how you feel. It's tough for me to um, hang in there. We will get through this. I think it's really important that people realize this, and I think it's really great that you mentioned that because a lot of people, as I mentioned on many of my streams, is that people are feeling isolated right now. Uh, they feel like they're in this alone when they're not. Everyone's in the exact same boat, you know? So I think it's important that we can all share that the last year has been ultra shit. And that's okay because, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all going to get through this. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. Uh, Max, what about you? How's, how's it been? Because as you said, as you rightfully said, I stand corrected that nobody did guess um, that, uh, you know what it was? I think it was... Uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Matt Mercer who put out a tweet that had like a red 13 pumpkin or something, and that's what everyone clung on to. I think that's what it was. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah I think that's maybe. what it was. And I was just being a bad host, so my apologies. But um, we're, <laughs> we're, okay. we're a year down now, and everyone knows it's you. What's what's it been like for you? Um, it, well, for me, typically, um, I, I go to a lot of comic cons and i interact with fans often um but i haven't been able to do that for the past year so normally when when uh i announce a role um that is very popular i will be at conventions and people will reinforce the popularity of the role and we'll talk about it and i'll talk about the franchise of the game and whatever it is and uh, i haven't been able to do any of that so um this is the first time that i'm talking about this role uh at all and um, uh, it's very, it's still very exciting. It's, it's still very exciting, but I, but it feels like, it does feel like so long ago that this came out and it's insane that it's, it's been a year. Um, but, uh, but it's just as exciting now as it was, you know, when it first came out and especially that um, fans are loving the game and loving oh, the, the feedback's performances been phenomenal huh like yeah. the feedback's oh. been so do, have any of you noticed a spike in the feedback since the game was playstation plus included 
Um, that was yeah. last month, I think it was, which was a bit of a shocker. I wasn't expecting that, to be fair. Um, Sony and Square must have come up with a hell of a deal for that one. Um, but Sony have really been nailing their PlayStation Plus games recently. So that kind of almost brought it back to the surface. And obviously with the DLC coming up and the integrated version, like it's all everyone's, you know, feeling the buzz again. Are you guys feeling the the end, Brianna? I know that you're very active. You stream. Um, what's it What's it been like hearing from the fans? That's ex- it's exactly what you said. It was super, super. There was just a lot of attention on Final Fantasy VII Remake when it first came out, and then a lot of um, other amazing games came out. And you know, Final Fantasy wasn't all we talked about, but ever since it came out on PS Plus and uh, the announcement of Intergrade. Yeah, it's been this whole new excitement all over again. And with the anniversary being today, all of us are looking back and and remembering those good memories of how it was a year ago when it first came out and especially how much we needed it at that exact time. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so there's Mm -hmm. there's a whole new buzz going on right now for sure. We're all very excited for June. And I think a lot of people were probably wondering if a trailer would drop today or something would happen. Nothing has happened. Uh, well, nothing had happened from the beginning of the stream and nobody's mentioned anything to me. So I don't think anything has. And, well, this is happening. This is happening. We this is great. More excitement than so this. I- took away from my own stream uh, <laughs> one thing though i would have Alex, lo- God. I'm, sorry i'm such an amateur <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I, i'll cry myself to sleep tonight what happened austin <laughs> yelled at me um one thing i would have loved to have done is i would have loved to have had the voice actor of yuffie on today unfortunately square in their wisdom have not dropped the name yet and i'm not going to be that kind of person it's not that kind of stream but i would uh you know individual um i do hope that uh we can bring you on stream to talk about the role uh in the future as with all the the new cast that are being introduced look at you didn't drop one name saved the internet today no IGN scoop today. Uh, <laughs> so, as I said, the game's been out for a year. And we get all that fan feedback. Um, Danielle, as I, we talked about a little bit earlier, when you put out the tweet of Gwen, um, it got a huge reaction. Um, what's it been like um, having fans contact you and talk to you about the, uh, your character? It's been uh, like the entire year, just on and off, would just be people saying oh, we didn't have to be mean to Cloud. And I'm like, okay, I did my job right. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been, it's the uh, outpour of love in the community has been amazing. And um, I still feel like that little girl that played FF7, which is when my very first Final Fantasy game I played, I still feel like I can't believe like, I actually have like a small part in this game from me playing this game when I was younger. So it's it's been amazing. So you have an emotional tie to it. Now, here's a question for a show of hands. How many of you have actually played the Final Fantasy VII Remake? Okay. So who should we shame first? <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's start with Britt. <laughs> okay. I, in my defense, I have watched my boyfriend play. Okay. Play. That's okay. I tried, but it was just a catastrophe. So, well, you know, they do have an easy mode and I like, I, I, I mean, my five-year-old can handle it. So I, a six-year-old can handle it. So I, <laughs> them's fighting that's words, Alex. Woo. That is, that's hard. It's yeah. too hard for me. Yeah. So, aren't they with Intergrade coming out with like a new mode though, on top of it's like, it's, it's an easy mode with an additional assistance, I think. I That's think if I remember correctly, it's that classic was only available in normal. Right. Now they're easy, giving easy difficulties classic. to classic mode. Okay. Interesting. Okay. okay. Well, like I, I think that we should uh, do a fundraiser to just have Brit do a stream <laughs> struggling <laughs> through the game. But I, I mean, to be fair, I lived it. So I feel like a lot of projects, <laughs> um, you spend so many hours. It's, like I've watched maybe glow once and then you're like, all right, I can't watch that ever again. Um, Cause I don't know. Sometimes it's, it's hard for me. Cause you, you have a certain experience in the booth with these characters over and over again. And then watching the final product is cool, but it, it, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It feels like, Whoa, this is now that's all edited. And it's, it's with this face, it feels slightly different. So I kind of like to maintain my personal experience. I know that that's, a lot, a lot also, of, Go ahead. Go ahead. 
I was just saying, I don't tend to play games that I'm in. I'm in a lot of video games and that I was... rarely play games I'm in. And I play a lot of video games and I very rarely pick up games that I'm in. I like to keep a separation there. I am already like so emotionally yeah. entrenched in what I do. I care so much and w- I, I like to leave it in the booth and whatever happens mm-hmm. after that is great and amazing, but I don't need to be sitting there playing my game, you know, nitpicking and scrutinizing my performance. That was like literally it, I know where it I was sounds, gonna ask. I was gonna ask. I know how many it sounds of you crazy. Would like yeah. not want to listen to yourself because I know a lot of actors don't like to watch themselves back, right? How do you guys feel yeah. about that? It, it, ta- it takes you out of it. Right. You know, it takes you out of it. I, I like to I just, would totally agree with, with Eric and Brett. Same thing. You know, you leave it in the booth or you leave it in the room, let it go, and you move on, you know, to whatever comes next. Is that because you'll yeah, you'll be sure. watching it back and going, oh, I shouldn't have done it like that. I should have done it like this or. <laughs> Not necessarily. No, no. I think yeah, like ahead, Erica. Uh, with, just with with Jesse specifically, I have a lot of like feelings attached to her, mm. her and I feel them immediately when I, I went I went back and of course I watched the cutscenes and everything and I I don't necessarily need to like go back there emotionally you know it's it's weird because there's like uh, no spoilers but like it's not some some not great stuff happens to her and I don't want to I don't want to go back there mm. <laughs> it would yeah. be really sad yeah so anyway. your cat wants attention by the way yeah oh yeah oh I know <laughs> look at me look at me yeah exactly cute you know, Alex, you, you you brought up an interesting point, at least for myself. I'm curious what the uh, the on-camera actors, uh, the other on- on-camera actors feel, because I do really enjoy watching, like, the, the cut scenes when I do voiceover, because I love seeing my uh, my character doing the animation, and, and, and I love that part. Um, but I don't enjoy watching myself on camera as much, um, because I do find myself judging judging my acting. Um, so I'm just finding, I find it very interesting that I enjoy watching these scenes when I'm animated, but not so much in real life. I'm just curious. Do you, do the, you, do you guys feel that way? I do. I'm the same <laughs> way. I, I can watch the video game, but I love the game anyway. Uh, and I love watching folks I know in games. I don't mind. I'll, I'll listen to mine, but I'm always critical, but on camera, it's hard for me to watch my stuff. Cause I'll go, mm, I should have done this or I should have done this or, and I'm always judging myself. So I'm like, just fast forward through dad's part or. <laughs> Cause I mean, with a vi- when you're voice acting something, a lot of the time you have very little visuals. So I would imagine you'd be like, it's kind of nice to see the final piece. You know what I mean? If you're acting it, physically acting it, you're, you're, you're portraying it, you're living it. But a lot of you voice these characters and don't actually get to see it until the final piece. So I guess everyone has their own, their own method, right? Interesting. Well, Cool. Um, I got totally lost in the moment there. So I really want, as I said, now that we're up to here, I, you know, I really want to kind of focus on the fan experience. So Cody, I really, um, something I've noticed is, ooh, what was that? Hello. Someone got a nice message. Um, <laughs> Cody, you're not incredibly active on social media. I think you use Instagram a little bit, but your Twitter and Facebook's pretty quiet. So yeah. what's what's it been like for you interacting with fans? Do you, have you been like overwhelmed with people coming to you and saying, oh, my God, you're cloud. Wow. Wow. Like, what's it been like yeah. for you? Um, I mean, good point. I, I have been a lot more. Uh, I wasn't quiet. taking a pop, by the way. I was no, like, you're, Cody, you're get you're on good. Twitter. I, I would like to justify it. Right. Um, I'm just so in my head about like filming right now. Yeah. I'm filming a show called All American. Um, and then with everything going on in the world, like it's, it's really required me to kind of like buckle down and focus. Uh, and then also, you know, kind of what, what Vic was saying earlier, um, the effect that everything has had, you know, just kind of like mentally and emotionally on, on, you know, pretty much everybody. Um, and how he said, you know, we, we can understand and relate. Everybody's going through it. Uh, it's very similar, you know, I'm, you know, I haven't been the best mentally in a lot of, of, you know, kind of the relief that I'm getting is pouring myself into the work. Uh, so that's kind of been, you know, my main focus, but, um, no, man, the, the, the response that I got from the announcement, um, you know, to the game being released and even now, you know, it's been, it's been incredible. Uh, my, my main goal setting out and portraying this character was, you know, just doing justice to the, 
the fan base old and new, um, you know, giving people what they wanted to see. And, uh, you know, I haven't for the majority, at least I didn't let anybody down. So I feel very accomplished and fulfilled and humbled, you know, you haven't let anybody to... down. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's an been... incredibly intimidating role. Very yeah. intimidating. They're all the whole game is intimidating as hell. This is not an average game. There's a lot of people. Do you, I'm not sure. Like some of you do follow the franchise, some of you don't. Many many years back, I forget what year it was when the original trailer dropped, and then even before that, I think there was a technical demo for the PS3 that they just showed some footage, and people were like, "Oh my god, they're going to remake this game," and everyone lost their absolute shit. And then it was like technical demo and then it was like literally pitchforks at dawn so i think it was at this point they realized you know we've probably got to remake this game i i, I it's it's an incredible thing to be involved with never forget that like i know you've all had incredible roles and stuff but to be in this game is such a such a monumental thing sorry a little bit of fanboying there um so we've talked about where we are now Without destroying a bunch of NDAs, let's talk about where we're going. Um, the future. Obviously, this was part one, and I'm gonna and I get it. We can't talk. We can't talk about too much, but we can. We you know, as from a story perspective, we know certain things are gonna happen in the future. Max, you must be quite excited for part two because you're gonna be in more of it. Um, you were introduced very very late. So it's nice for you to, to to have some some more focal point. All right, what? What? Oh, I didn't. I don't, this is uh, where everyone starts didn't. to squirm. I can't. I'm. We're break. I think the connection is oh, bad. I'm, I'm not gonna make you talk about anything that you shouldn't. But I'm just saying we know that Red's more focal in the future. Are you excited to have more? Fo you know, focus on your character. I'm a good boy. I never, never steer people in the wrong way. Oh, come I mean, on, Alex. I don't. When did I ever do that? I've interviewed... Me always ask. Name one time. <laughs> name one time. You're oh, doing don't, your Don't job. you look it's at me fair. like that, John Bentley. <laughs> I'm not looking at don't anybody. You I'm like Don't you put your nose up at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited every time I get in the booth. That's good enough. Thanks very much. Well, look, there's the... There's a, Good job, Max. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, the 15 lawyers that are watching are happy. Probably more than that. <laughs> no, probably. Well, we're definitely, I think we can all safely say that we're all very excited for the future. And um, that's, I'll just leave it at that. But we are all very excited. I think like I, even, even with Integrate, with the bonus content, let's say, um, we're all excited to relive it. I actually have only played it the one time. I have not revisited it since. I'm excited to go back and play it on the PS5. Um, Get on it. I'm, I'm, I'm on playthrough number five, dude. Yeah, well, <laughs> like I, I feel like it's a really special and I don't really want to like, you know how you like, like you can over <laughs> you can overplay something? Do you know what I mean? I like can get burnt out on it. Totally got it. It but, is a surprisingly um, long game as well. I think that mm. everyone was pleasantly surprised how much content there actually yeah, is in I, the game. I think people were concerned it was going to be a 20 hour out the door. I think my play time was about 42 hours, I think it was, which is a full game. Um, and that's mm. why when you see people say, oh, it's not a full game, it's like, it really is. Like They, they took a, a game and expanded on it massively. Um, look, let's take some questions from the thousand people watching um they've been submitting questions everyone's like oh god don't mention part two um there's a lot of questions from a lot of different people so we're going to fly through and if you do have a question as you're watching this um please feel free to um just uh, drop it in the chat and one of my mods will pick it up um okay so let's uh let's rock on so we'll start with well, we've already kind of covered intimidated roles, um, so we could just do this as a show of hands. Alani said, did any of the cast feel intimidated stepping into the role? I imagine that's an, uh, we've covered it. Everyone was pretty intimidated by it. <laughs> Brit's like, no, I, I rocked, no, I I rocked <laughs> it. Um, well, so we can't, well, we can't ask that one. So that's, um, yes, um, Louise is like... Um, Oh, what are you most excited for about the second part of the installment? Can you give us any teasers? We're not even going to go there. 
Um, we've talked nope. about established I'm excited characters. Every time I get in the booth. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good line. Where did you get that line from? I'm telling you, Max set the precedence for that. It's a so, beautiful, beautiful line. Um, I remember we had a question come in um, from, I think it was Brogan. She, she asked um, about Red 13. Brogan. Now, Max, tell me, as you said, nobody had picked up on it was you. Completely different voice. Did you, when you went in for the audition for it, did you already have the voice down? Um, the audition, I mean, for the audition, uh, I, I looked at the specs of the character and typically if there's, um, a picture of the character that'll inform my choices. I don't remember if there was a picture, but, um, I, there couldn't have been because it was so secretive, but I went with my best guess as to what they were looking for. I think I gave them two takes. Um, and, uh, when we got to the first session, we honed in on what the voice was going to sound like, which took like, you know, just a few minutes to, to clean it up. And, um, and that was it. Well, it, as you said, not, not instantly recognized, but very deep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different type of compliment. Uh, Britt, there was a great question here um, uh, that uh, somebody mentioned about your uh, role as Justine in Glow. And they asked, um, what do you think would be a good wrestling name for Tifa? Oh, good wow. Question, right? Oh, gosh, I'd have to think about that. Um, we'll be back in 20 minutes. <laughs> with a Titan, maybe something with a T, you know, and she would, I'd have to come up with a really good move. I enjoy but... how you even flexed it out. Then you, you took the role, <laughs> you know, it was, you had the moment and you were in character. It was great. <laughs> That's a good There's got to be a reference to the pull-ups in there too, somehow. Mm. Right. That's true. Pull-up queen. Yeah. She's uh, a, what about, what about that... dynamite dolphin since all of her attacks are dolphin based? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I thought this was so. a, a really good question. Um, this is open to everyone. It's from Miguel. Um, they say, can you tell us more about recording for fighting in particular, how you would do that, the methods that you would use? Because obviously there's a lot of grunts and noises. Um, how, how do you go about recording something like that? Cody, I imagine you did a fair bit of grunting in the, in oh, yeah. the booth. Take that as I you can't will. Tell you the amount of times I like hit the stand and like bumped into something. Um, <laughs> I tried to embody it as much as I could. I mean, obviously, I had to stay pretty much locked into where the mic is, and but I tried to like move as much as possible. And if I couldn't move, I was like my sword slashes were like this. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, just trying to be as physical as I can, um, and just kind of you know committing to it. The first when I did it, I was like, wow, I feel super silly but um you know the more you kind of just commit uh you know i think the better it sounds anybody else it was interesting doing it because roche enjoys getting hit a bit way too much um so <laughs> it was definitely interesting they're just like like okay you're getting hurt but you like it okay <laughs> <laughs> All right. so just he's such a glutton for punishment so it was it was really really funny and weird and also a lot of fun <laughs> so do i envision when you guys are in the booth making noises that you are you, you're acting out a good portion of it to create that sound effect because it's not very easy to make a like i can't even make a sound of it like a without doing the action right like that's that's how i would envision it anyway it's very physical very, yeah. very physical. I'm always yeah. sweating in the booth all the time after oh, session. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. What's embarrassing is 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 like working a huge sweat in the booth, doing all these fight efforts, and then realizing somebody has to use that booth after you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this one was harder than other video games for me, especially with efforts, because we were fitting it into what was already recorded in Japanese, and it was so right. Nick. So mm -hmm. normally efforts, I feel like they just leave the mic open and I can do a bunch of like, uh, uh, you know, but with this one, it was so specific. Mm -hmm. So that was a new challenge for me, at least recording. I agree with Brett. You know, yeah. Yeah, you've done Call of true. Duty before and Call of Duty, you can give out so many different, you're dying. Now you're dying by fire. Now you're falling <laughs> off a cliff. This was like, 
you had this much room to do it and very specific uh, ways to do it and very specific examples that you had to follow in doing it. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was it was a workout. I can imagine, like, and then finishing all that, and they're like, right, we're going to do a serious scene now. And you're just, like, dripping <laughs> with sweat, and you're like, okay, here we go. Luckily, well, usually... they planned it so that, at least for me, I didn't have anything to do after okay. the effort. So yeah. they, they planned for that. Good for them. Great directors. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, I've heard nothing but positivity about the people behind <laughs> the scenes. And that's not always the case, from what I understand. But I heard the team behind the scenes were like like on point. Everybody was directors, great. great casting director. Um, yeah, great. I would love directors. to shout out everybody. You know, like the directors and Bob, Kurt, Colette, Rita was fantastic. Uh, sound engineer Justin, I worked with all the times. Um, Justin, and this is good. If it wasn't, if it wasn't and for them, you know? I mean, there everybody, man. Everybody was. Uh, like awesome. it's a, I mean, you watch the credits <laughs> roll at the end of a game and you realize exactly how many people were involved to create something On this both big. both sides right? of the globe. Yeah, yeah. Both sides yeah, of the globe. You for know? sure. And um, a lot of times we as voice actors are kind of the front face of a character, but so much work goes in on the writer's side to make sure that that characterization is what you see, that, you know, we're the front face of a lot of the, oh, I love the character, I really identify with her, but a lot of that credit goes to the writers as well. Like, our mm -hmm. performance is just one part of it. I think I relied on them so much, I think, yeah. specifically with this game. I didn't play, you know, I hadn't played it growing up, and so... The directors, like they really were good at hand holding and making sure where do we want Tifa? Is this, you know, and and because you're in there for hours. So sometimes I'll slip out of the voice and they're like, come, you know, they were really, really great in, in my experience. But you did a really good job. Like Tifa is a very emotional character. There's a, you know, there's unique ties between all the characters and there's a great, there's a couple of great scenes with Cloud and Tifa in the bar, uh, in Cloud's um, motel, whatever you want to call it, room. There's there's some really good moments. So you really, I, I, you did great. For someone who wasn't familiar with the, the game or the series, I couldn't tell. Like it was fantastic. Here's a great question. And I know the answer um, for some of you, um, and Max, I'm very interested to see how you respond to this one. And if it's, oh, I enjoy all my time in the booth, then I know you weren't listening. Uh, <laughs> of the people here, would you like to cosplay your character? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Now, Why Brianna, I know heard. that you've already done that. You actually did it. Uh, was was that like four or five months ago now? Yeah, that sounds about right. Like, I think was... the pictures went out in October. Right. And yeah. uh, what was that like for you? Oh my gosh, it was horrible. The experience of actually getting in the outfit and then going out into public to shoot the pictures. It was so nerve wracking because you're dressed up as this fantasy character. You have this big wig on, you have this contacts in, they're so uncomfortable. And then everybody's staring at you as you're walking through. That part of it was horrible, but the actual like seeing the photos is like magnificent and it's worth every single bit of it. And I was also very lucky to be gifted some of the pieces for it because I can't make anything with my hands. I'm just not talented in that way. So I was very fortunate that Lady Zero made my dress. And, and they and did an incredible job. And then I had yeah. some really talented yeah. cosplayer. I am Kate. Hello, I am Kate. Who helped do the wig and helped me pick everything out? So I had a lot of help. But so you're not good with your really you're not great. good with arts and crafts and stuff like that then. No, okay, no I cannot. So sew next a CooperCon, we're going to do like a model building session with you, and yes. it's, or we'll do Lego or something. Keep it easy. But your your photos were fantastic, Brianna. They were yeah. so beautiful, yeah. Brianna. Yeah, no, they, they were, were not so. Yeah, they were. so good. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So, so then, for everybody who raised their hands, we all have to get together and do a Final Fantasy VII remake <laughs> cast cosplay photo. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm down. I'm down. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> Let's do it. I would love to do it, but you'll never know that it's me bit. inside that costume. <laughs> 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 oh, that's true. <laughs> I, I would like to share that I got the uh, honor of reenacting redoing uh in cosplay the uh the flashback scene with with uh song and young young Aerith. uh you know you're a member of the ancients and so i did that over the over the over the christmas break and i got to use my 
my daughter as as young Eric. And oh, that's so cute. That's so, so sweet. So yeah, so that's up on Twitter. I I have to admit that was uh that was that was kind of fun getting that's to use cool. my daughter. And uh and yeah, she upstages me because 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 she's adorable. But but that was fun. Who else said that they'd be up for a cosplay? Me. Yeah. Look at those yeah. hands. I, 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 re- I, I want to see Max do it. I really want to see Max do it. <laughs> I well, I, like, like, like Brianna, I, I have no uh, ability to, to make anything. So if the furry community wanted to make me a yeah. Red 13 <laughs> costume. Oh my God. To you have to, there's a guy who comes to CoopaCon. His name is Jonathan. He does a Red 13 cosplay. Blow your mind. Blow your freaking mind. I can't wait. I oh, can't wait to incredible. see that. Incredible. Like John, you've seen really it. Yeah, it's something well. else. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cody, you time can time. borrow my sword. That's cool. Like, <laughs> so <we're here>. tip <laughs> is broke. No, I fixed it with glue. I fixed they ever, it. If they ever turn like Final Fantasy into like a live action movie, yeah, like that would be. And like we have these. The oh, oh god, I broke it. Oh god, I broke one. No, I didn't. They're, no, they're really strong. <laughs> you can borrow some materia as well. Like we'll all go to town. We'll like push the boat out. Light up. It's not even gonna light up. There you go. <laughs> How about you got I don't think you're the only one who would love a live action Final Fantasy VII remake. I don't think you're I the only one insane. at all. Cosplaying. Cosplaying. Hold on a minute. Some Final Fantasy movies have done very well, some have not. So let's, let's be. Same <laughs> with video game movies in general. Some yeah, have done genius. really well, and yeah. some have yeah. not. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. For sure. Thankfully, Final Fantasy VII has the has the great video game movie, so I don't know what the what the worry is there. <laughs> I was the, my my pick for favorite Final Fantasy movie has always been the King's Glaive movie. I always liked that. That's so good. It was very good. It's Just so animated good. to like to its crazy degree. Uh, okay, so let's. Um, we got other questions. We have got so many questions coming in. Okay, here's a question from Simon for Erica. Um, um, Erica, you got kind of like that evil Bond villain thing going on right now. You got the cat there like, yes, Mr. Bond. <laughs> you get um, down, honey. I love you. Okay. Are you talking to me or the cat? Oh, uh, but both, you know, why not both? Okay, great. This is the best call of my life. Okay. So, um, you did a fantastic job with the role of Jesse and turned her into one of my favorite characters. How did you find it getting into the character knowing she was already loved by many but had such little character development previously so before you know tiny little pixel barely had a backstory and then the remake comes yeah. and we've got this story about her father and uh i was i was really nervous I remember my first couple of sessions i was incredibly nervous but also there was a lot of freedom there because jesse had never had a voice before so there was nothing to compare me to <laughs> luckily and uh i was like all right well i'm just gonna you know, I'm just going to do my thing. And um, I'm just staring at Mike. I'm just like, they're going to decide to kill each other right right now is going to be the time. Uh, I, I was ner- nervous, but nervous, but really excited. I mean, you just, you know, you, you only get one or two of these shots in a lifetime to work on something mm-hmm. like this. And I just wanted to make sure that it was good and that people liked it. I also had no idea how much how how expanded her character was going to be and her story. I just did not know. I, the first few sessions, I was like, oh, okay, okay, like she's around. And then they kept calling me back in and calling me back in. And she had a whole, you know, a whole arc. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, all you can do is your, is your best. And uh, it, I mean, voice acting is a director's medium. You know, they're picking the takes. I, I'm, not, I'm not picking what's getting shipped. So all I could do was really just throw it down in the booth and, and, hope, and hope that it worked out. You've touched on but a yes, good I, point because a lot of people ask, and this question that we get asked almost every stream is, how much creative freedom do you really have in the booth? Like, if there, were there ever times where you were like, oh, can we try it a bit more like this? Or is it, is it you know, is, is it more the director telling you, no, this is, this is how we've got to... I feel like this this specific project was super collaborative. We had really, mm-hmm. really good directors who were, uh, listen, I'm crazy. I will keep doing takes until I'm dead, until I have no <laughs> breath left in my, I want to give every single option. I just need to like get it out of my face just so they have it, even if they don't use it, whatever. But that's just, that's just my process. But I did find that this, um, that these directors were incredibly 
collaborative. And and after the first few sessions, they, they sessions they would say, oh well, do you think Jesse would say it like this or or like this, or if I would change something around, as long as it fit. Though we were we were beholden to time like time limits. Um, and and I know that they were fixing the mouth animations for the um, English release, which was awesome. So we were not beholden to the to the mouth flaps. Um, I hear that. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, I've I've dubbed a lot of anime, so it's like second nature to me at this point. But uh, but yeah, it was it was really nice. They they gave us as much freedom as was allowable, right. and they were willing to collaborate and and work with us. And I do think that that's such a testament to the casting. They cast people that they really could allow to just run with it. Like you've got the sauce, you've got what we want, go do it. Just go do your thing. John, I know you spoke about this previously, how the Japanese Barrett was all you had to base on and you wanted to give it its own, your your own version of it. How was that, you know, how, how was that going into it? It was an adjustment. Uh, it's like Erica said though, we had so much freedom um, because it was a collaboration. Um, but I, I, you know, I didn't want him to be a caricature. I, I didn't want him to be a stereotype. So there were times where I would hear what I would hear in my ear and go, okay, I gotta either listen to that for inflection or for length of time, or I just gotta cat, just know what I have to do and then take it and interpret it myself and, and make it fit for um, a man. <laughs> you know, the, the, who Barrett is as a man or whatever the scene required. So, you know, I was pretty i was in my head a lot but i too am like erica i'll give you 50 million takes until you tell me to stop and there are times when you know i remember kurt saying you got it you got it you don't have to go back i'm like yeah but i, I want to make sure that he enunciates it better and that they, 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 they i thank god someone else does that because man yeah. i am I'm, I'm constantly striving for a level of perfection that quite honestly does not exist right and no, it no, is I'm, yeah it, it was, tears it was, me up inside yeah it was that important <laughs> to me to get it right uh you know, I had a lot, to, in my opinion, I think there was a lot at stake. There was a lot of accountability for me. There was, you know, my my people, my culture, my race. I don't want to go out and jack something up to have everybody think that about, you know, African-Americans. I, and then it was my family. I, I don't want to embarrass my family. Then there was me, of course. I'm like, I wanted to do it right, but I, I didn't want to do it how everybody else thought it should be done. So It's a good you know, point. I had to take, because yeah, the, all you had of the original right. Barrett was him just shaking his hands, shaking. right? Like, that's yeah, it. I mean, and yeah. a bunch of what looked like swear words, but weren't. They were just right, symbols. Right, right. That's all you had. Yeah. So I wanted to take the, the visual. I wanted to take the audio and blend it to make. So that I was in my head a lot, you know. Um, but because I was, I guess, prepped for it, I, I'm like Cody, too, just trying to get it all right, trying to get it down. How much research can I do? Where did he actually come from? What is his backstory? Uh, thank God I played it back in 97. I wanted to get it right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, by the time we got to the booth, it was time to play. I'm going to ask one more question, and then I'm going to start to wrap it up. Um, Andrew asks, which I think is a great question. This is open to everyone. Um, how do you deal with pressure and the stress and also rejection when things don't go well? You asking all of us? Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna let's let Britt go with this one. Her yeah, facial reaction w said just I could see the emotion. So Britt, like pressure, huge, obviously, and you know a lot of people in everyone's life they're dealing with the pressure of work. Also, the thing we all hate, rejection. How is it? How how do you cope with that? Uh I mean, I I'm still learning to cope years into this business. I don't know if I'll ever be fully, you have to really shut your heart down to just totally um, accept all the rejection that's involved in at least this industry, but I think all industries in some ways. Uh, it's a skill, I think, to be able to like do an audition and just walk away and move on with your life. I think all of us kind of had to do that with Final Fantasy. I know, I think maybe Vic was the one talking about a lot of, we have so many video, I have so many voiceover auditions and most of them I just never hear back you just mm -hmm. send it out and it goes into the ether this is how I would do it I try to take that mentality as an actor this might not be what's right but this is how I would do this character and make a choice but it's hard and I think that especially with this franchise being so enormous with such a huge fan base with so many years building up to this it was um really intimidating to walk into those shoes, but also really exciting because this is kind of 
what the dream is as an actor to get to be a part of this huge fan base that people are so passionate about. Um, so I tried to just look at it in a positive light and it, instead of, oh my God, this is so scary. It's so exciting. What a gift this is as an actor, but it's hard. It's a journey. I'm still it's good days and bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else add to that? If, if I can add something, um, as actors, we experience so much rejection. And what I tell other actors is accept that this is part of the path that you chose. And because what we can try doing is we try to insulate ourselves from the rejection. And by doing that, we just discount every bit of progress. Like, oh, well, I got a callback, but, you know, forget about that callback. I'm not going to get it. Oh, well, you know, they, they've got me on a veil, but I'm not going to get it. Oh, okay, fine. They got me, but I, I mean, they booked me, but I'll, they'll probably get cut out and, or replaced or anything like that. We try so hard to protect ourselves from the rejection and that's not how you live life. And whether you're an actor or anything, it's like, let yourself experience those joys. Um, you know, embrace those things. Because if you get, if you lose it, if you, if you get rejected, it's going to hurt no matter what. But, but you need to hold on to those little joys because that's the fuel that like keeps you going for the next thing. So I just wanted to get, get on my soapbox for that, that one. Point. Thank you. No, that's uh, yeah, beautifully put. Like, yes. seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned to uh, thank God for a lot of the closed doors, too, because uh, there's, mm -hmm. there's character building in it. And also, Absolutely. I've seen some of the end results from some of the jobs I thought I should have gotten. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so glad I wasn't part of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I thank him for the closed doors, too, bro. Mm -hmm. Fair. That if you, if you just do the best that you can do at that given time, then everything is out of your control at that point. You do yeah. your audition. You record your audition. You made your choices, you stuck by them, you took risks, anything, you know, you were you. And I think that's, that's all you could do at the end of the day. Right. And everything else is beyond your control. And part, what part of said also, right? sorry, go ahead, man. No, you go for it. Absolutely. Go for it. Uh, thanks, man. Um, so like what Vic said, right? Celebrating all these little joys, something that I've learned, um, you know, rejection and, and the pain of that, the heartache of it, you know, it's, it's a part of the process and, you know, embrace the joys as much as, this the the successes as much as the quote unquote failures right um and to what john was saying as well uh it, it adds to the character it's it's a part of you know the journey right like you can't really appreciate the highest of highs unless you've experienced the lowest of lows so you know it's all part of it and i think that's you really integrate in the learning process of traveling through you know this career path and, and you know many other career paths as well but um you know it's all it's all part of it we all wear like our heart on our sleeves and we allow ourselves to get emotionally attached and well look you know, here's a that leads to here's a highest of highs for you and a lowest of lows for me when i was preparing all these announcements and you were the last one and my wife walks in and she like just scans over and and your announcement is on my screen and she's like like look the second look she's like Whoa, he's a heartthrob <laughs> so there, there's a highest of highs for you and a lowest of lows for me. <laughs> so if things don't work out, there's a beautiful woman uh, in, in Canada just, just waiting for you. I was like, thanks, Matt. Like, I've never seen her turn that fast. It was like something out of Resident Evil. Anyway, great. I, there is another great question that I, I couldn't leave. Um, I didn't catch the name of the person who mentioned it, but they were talking about Red 13 and they were talking about Barrett. Max, John, the, the, the chemistry between the two characters is, is brilliant. Like Red has got a lot of sass and Barrett is just like kind of caught off guard at times and just is just brilliant. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, it's, I mean, that that's uh, John can't say anything because he did the performance first for me to play off of. So it's John's brilliant performance that I was playing off of right. and <laughs> allowed me to, to, to marry, you know, the two performances together. So that's all, that's all John. Hey, listen, the, that, that's another reason I'm thrilled to be able to talk with Max and I can't wait to meet him because I think he's brilliant because it's hard to do that. It's hard to do this, hard to get what you heard someone say. And I don't need, we did so many takes. I, I don't know which ones they gave you for the finished product. So, but the best all ones, the <laughs> all the characters, <laughs> you know, even me interacting with, with Max, me interacting with, with uh, Britt, me interacting with Cody, 
there it's not easy to do because you're not with the person but that's why i say kudos to the writing kudos to the creative staff that they were fun man there's some funny stuff going on but i have a feeling that like if i hang out with max for real we would probably go back and forth and say some funny clever stuff he's just that kind of, <laughs> yeah just just me knowing ray and everybody else knowing everything i've heard about you and about all the folks that you're hanging out with you know it's like oh yeah it's cool it's it is what it is. You just live in it. That was fun. I think I speak for everyone when I say that we're all incredibly excited for the next time you get in the booth um, and um, do whatever needs to be done for for part two. Hopefully that was okay, Max. Um, and uh, we're, we're all... <laughs> Max, <laughs> Max we're, is our NDA warrant. Yeah, we're, all, we're all really excited. Now, I did say that there was a couple scenes that I didn't get a chance to do last time, so we're just going to whip through a couple little things and then I'm going to wrap this up because I know we're over time. But this is a good scene. It's a bit more of a heartfelt one. Um, it is um, the scene in the bar between Cloud and Tifa. Um, and it does have a little bit of Barrett, so I thought we could give that one a go. This was just after, this is uh, between reactor jobs. This ring a bell? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Would have been terrible if you said no. <laughs> no. No. I, think I don't think would. I've ever read this. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. Okay, ready? roll on. <clears throat> I heard you're having second thoughts. I know we have to think big if we're going to make a difference, but not like this. I just, I feel trapped. If it feels wrong, then don't do it. Guess that's that then. What, they kick you out? We agreed to disagree. So, you want another drink? Diva! Time to celebrate. Break out all the good stuff. Oh, sure. You can't drink, soldier boy. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's try a role reversal. So, Britt, who would you like to give your part to? Oh boy, how about Austin? <laughs> okay. <laughs> am I doing like it like Cam Tifa, game? or am I doing it like Roche? Oh, do it like <laughs> Tifa. Okay. I think it would be weird as Roche. You can do it. It, it might be interesting. Oh, um, John, who do you want to give Barrett to? Danielle. Okay. Okay. And Cody. I want, I want Max. I want to see you want you Max. Want yeah. okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You think that's bad? You wait to. We got one more scene after this, and you're going to regret I ever mentioned it. Mallory knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. The floor okay. is yours. I heard you're having second thoughts. I know we have to think big if we're going to make a difference, but not like this. I just, I feel trapped. It feels wrong, don't it? I guess that's that then. What? I kick you out. We agreed to disagree. So, want another drink? FIFA, time to celebrate. Break out all the good stuff. Oh, sure. I'm so confused. You asked. You asked for it. <laughs> it was like it was like some. I loved it. It was like some obscure anime. Terrible. Was, Terrible. <laughs> it was, that was fun. <laughs> okay, we're gonna end with this one because this one, I, this one has to, you know. Okay. If this I, one. if I. <laughs> Austin, I feel trapped. Okay, so th this one has uh, Cloud, Madam M, and yeah. Aerith in it. This is a good one. <laughs> ah, at least it's not the other one. Oh, I wasn't going to push I, I it know, to the exactly. limit. I know, exactly. I was thinking yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not that you, kind of person. We're, have we're not going to give this an R rating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn my game down just a little bit. <laughs> All right, ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> We're not customers. Then you are? Hoping you can help get us an invite to an audition with Don Cren... Oh, for the love of... Say another word and I'll shove a fan right down your throat. This is the last thing I need. 
You're young and stupid. And I suppose that means you'll think I'll let you off easy. So you want what? A favor? Well, here's the thing. This is a massage parlor, a respectable establishment. But if you don't require our services, then tell me! Is there any reason I shouldn't have you dragged out outside and shot for wasting my valuable time? Well? Hmm. Name? Cloud Strike. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> so good. You can't, you can't even roll reverse that. That's it. That's the best, oh. the best version of that scene. Mal. I hope I didn't like kill anybody. No, it was great because your volume was like super low. So I think everyone turned it up and then you like screamed down the mic and everyone was just like. (laughs) That's the feeling I want you guys to feel when you're listening to the Mad Men. (laughs) Well, look, we are over time. So I'm going to give you all one opportunity to just say your, you know, your words um, to express what this one year anniversary. We'll just take it one at a time. Let's start uh, down in the corner, Max. Um, one year on. What's what, what do you want to say to the fans watching? I uh, can't wait to to meet you guys in, in person soon. When we get back to conventions in real life. I was really hoping for you to say, I can't wait to get back in the booth. I thought that's where you're going. Full circle. <laughs> Danielle? I, I'm in the same boat. I can't wait to meet you guys whenever, hopefully, non things go back to normal, hopefully. And uh, thank you for being here. Vic. Thank you for welcoming me into your community. Um, I'm, I'm new to it, but it's been wonderful. And I can't wait to meet you guys in person. Uh, Mallory. Um, thank you guys as well for welcoming me as a newbie to the Final Fantasy franchise. I am truly grateful for, for every one of you and to Square Enix and everybody for this opportunity and we can't wait to meet you guys as well. Erica. Um, I heartily echo the sentiment. Thank you guys. It's been a, it's been a very long journey, but a very, um, a very like fruitful one for me and in in many different ways. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm excited for what's next. Thank you for having me. Austin. Yeah. Like, Thank you all for the love. Thank you for the welcoming. Uh, thank you even for the thirst. The thirst has been hilarious and fun. <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's been a delight. I can't wait to meet you all. And I hope to make some more fun memories with you guys because I've made a lot of nice friends over this year. So, Brianna. I'd just like to thank you all for loving the game. Thank you for loving these characters because it gives us just a once in a lifetime opportunity to live within that love and to live within that passion and to share that back with all of you. So thank you for that because that's really, really, really special. Uh, Britt. I mean, I, I echo everyone. Uh, this is an amazing fan base that has been just so incredible and it really does mean a lot. All of the, the feedback that we've gotten, um, so thank you. This is really just, it's just such an honor to get to be a part of this. And it means a lot, this community. So thank you guys. John. Uh, thank you so much to Square Enix for the work, uh, for this wonderful group of folks and those who are out there who've also helped create on it. Uh, thank you to the fan base. Cause I didn't know how special you were. And I didn't know that I would be leaning on many of you more so than you seem to reach out to us uh, as performers. So thank you and just try to keep everything positive with each other. Just let, let's get through all this stuff together on a positive note. Um, no crazy name calling, no foolishness. Just let's try to bring love back into this whole equation. That way we can do this one day at a time and get over any of the mess that 2020 brought us. If we could just stay positive, communicate, and just try to bring that love back. And Cody. John, I love you, man. That's 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 beautiful. Um, I mean, look, this has been such an incredible experience for me. Um, probably one of the most fulfilling in the last 16 years of me being part of this industry. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. You know, people behind the scenes and 
and, you know, giving us a chance and all the incredible talent present and those who couldn't make it to kind of collaborate and, and, you know, present this to the fans. I think it, um, I think it was needed. I think it was long anticipated. And honestly, I'm just super proud and, and humbled to be a part of it. So, um, you know, amazing memories and I'm looking forward to creating new ones with, with the gang squad here. So thank you guys. So I guess that all that leaves me to do is to say thank you very, very much for being here. Um, it is um, not an understatement to say that I have invested um, pretty much the last 12 months in the Final Fantasy community. It's kept me sane during COVID. Uh, and, uh, you know, meeting many, many fans at Coupacons all over. And when I traveled with John to do the uh, launch parties, uh, which was just over a year ago, it was a phenomenal experience. And... Uh, I know I've spoke to many of you before and some of you today is the first time, but it's been a truly, it's been a pleasure. Like I've really enjoyed this. Um, forgive my, um, ability to host. I'm not the best, but I do try my best. Um, it's, it really has been a, a pleasure and thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Um, it, it means a lot. And, and uh, Cody, I'm really pleased that you were able to join us. Um, as I mentioned, well, the reason why I wanted to thank mention you. is I noticed that you're not that active on social media. I think it's, really important that at least you know i hope you know that the work that you do is 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 hugely appreciated and i'm not sure if you're seeing that and i want you to know that the fans love the the, the work that you do i know everyone else is fairly active on twitter so I, I just want to make sure that you're getting that message loud and clear i truly appreciate it man and you know uh thank you again from the bottom of my heart you're in and and everybody that's reached out and, and commented on the work, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not just me, it's everybody. Yeah. Um, such a cast, like, I, I like hats off it. to all of you. Like seriously, what a game. Huh? And this is a game that we'll probably be cel celebrating for, I don't know, a decade or more. <laughs> Who knows how many parts there will be. Um, but, uh, what happens in the booth stays in the booth. Um, NBA. indeed. Um, thank so you, Alex. Oh, thank thanks, you. Alex. Thank, thank you. you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Love you, thank Kubacon. you. Yes, please do come to a Coupacon. Uh, like, uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, it's not possible. But we, you know, we did have an event coming up in Melbourne, Australia, and we do them in London, England, Scotland. We do them. We've done them in Glasgow, Scotland. We've done them in Vancouver, Toronto. Uh, we've done them in the States. We've done them all over, and it's it's a, a really unique experience because it's such a um, a fan central event it's so concentrated i guess you'd say right so anyway i am gonna wrap this stream up thank you to everyone that's watching uh right now there's about a thousand people still watching the stream if you enjoyed what you saw today it costs you nothing if you do have the ability to support us um kupo.shop we have produced so many cool things that once again i've completely forgot to show you any of the cool like look at this cool artwork that was made just for our remake look there you go yeah, i can send you guys that's awesome <laughs> Like I have an entire shelf of Coupocon stuff in my living room. I saw you with your mask when, when COVID dropped, and I saw that. But <laughs> I wear it every day. We have so many cool things, and literally the only thing keeping us alive right now, and not literally, but keeping the con alive is our store. So if you do have a chance, um, please do check it out. Thank you again. Oh, the Mogsarts, yeah. You would probably have one, two, and three there. I'll have to send you four. One, two, and three, yeah. Four has Dragon mm -hmm. Song on it from 14, and we brought in a, a singer for that. That was really, really special. When, it, when did Pontus finish four? Uh, summer. Damn. Yeah. And if you oh, haven't heard birthday, Melodies of Midgar, yeah, it's Pontus' birthday. Um, I'll, I'll send you happy all birthday. guys. I'll send you all a goodie bag. We'll send you some materia and we got a bunch of, we got so much stuff. Like it's, it's endless what we have. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to, uh, I'll be sure to send you all a goodie bag. But anyway, look, let's wrap this up, folks. Um, it's been a long stream. I thank you. I apologize. We went over time. I did my very best to keep it on schedule. I failed. Um, so thank you folks. Um, I'm going to sign off from the stream and say goodbye to the guests now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, stay safe. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye everybody. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.